you don't need to say yes to every opportunity of success. I'd like to believe that successful people are those who also know when, how, and why should they say no. So give me a raise of hands. Who here has a to-do list every day? All right? The rest are just boring people or inefficient people. I'm just kidding. So I'm sure a lot of you guys have a to-do list. That's the life of a very busy person. And doesn't it feel like you're a superman or a wonder woman if you're able to cross out this list, right? And if you're not able to cross out any of them, you feel like you're less of a person. But that feeling is fine because science tells us that you can only cross out two to three things, multitasking them on a daily life. Spreading yourself too thinly and weakly and so many other things will not lead you to any success. If I may ask you guys to imagine this. Who here watches Grey's Anatomy? I'm not sure if it's popular in Australia. Um, all right, so Grey's Anatomy is a TV show about a group of doctors and the drama that they have in their life. Let's set aside that TV show. I want you guys to imagine this scene. Let's imagine you're one of the doctors. There are five doctors who are on duty in the hospital today. You cannot call anyone else. And in front of you, the lobby of the hospital, is a bus of 40 passengers crashing. All right? You don't need to close your eyes. I want you guys to imagine that in those bus of 40 passengers, some people are dying, some people have lost a limb, an eye, some may be surviving. If you're one of the doctors, what's the first thing you're supposed to do? Segregate. All right, of course, you segregate. You prioritize the people who need the utmost help. And there's again another, thank you to the French, there's again another French term for this, which they use in times of calamities, earthquakes, uh, accidents, or even medical mishaps. And that is what they call as triage. Triage, again, is a French term which means to filter. It means that if there are many two people demanding for medical attention, but there are few people who can supply it, those doctors, paramedics, or nurses can only focus their attention to the people who need it the most. Unfortunately, in triage, if someone is going to die anyway, and we have too few resources to attend to them, we will painfully and regretfully abandon them as well. This is also life. When we wake up in the morning, we get so much stimuli, thinking we have to accomplish so many things. You get a WhatsApp message from your friend asking for something. You get a message from your boss through an email. You get a phone call from your husband or your kids asking for something. We feel compelled to accomplish so many things. But we never ask ourselves, is everything really wildly important? That everything must be accomplished that day? Or could I move things to another day or delegate them to someone else? If you look at the successful people, guys, um, you guys know for surely who these are. You have Richard Branson. You have the richest Asian in the world. That's Jack Ma, who owns Alibaba. Um, you have Steve Jobs. You have Warren. When I was young, I called him Warren Buffet. A brand is Warren Buffett, and there's also Bill Gates, and there's also Oprah. If you look at their biographies and their books, if you ask them one thing that's common among all of them, Warren Buffett says it best, and he says, for every 100 opportunities presented to me, I decline to 99 of them and focus only on one big thing and make a good name out of it. One thing and becoming too ambitious to do so many things, especially if I'm not good at them, will only spread myself too thinly. You look at Steve Jobs, you look at an Apple store today, and how many things can you buy in an Apple store? Lots, right? But in terms of, let's say, inventory of items, you can only buy an iPod, an iPad, an iPhone, a Mac. If you look at the major inventories, it's less than 10. But if you look at the patent office in the US today, how many patents does Apple have that could have been converted to any product or service? Hundreds? Higher? Thousands. Samsung has 44,000 patents. Apple has around 12,543 patents that could have been converted to any product or service. But Steve Jobs and Tim Cook said, no, we're not going to be tempted to do everything. We're only going to be focusing on one big thing, work hard for it in 20 years, and make a good name out of it. And really, if you look at Apple as a company, they're only selling one thing. What is that? That's common in all the gadgets. Software? Specifically? It's the iOS. 
They're not selling an iPhone. It's basically another phone with an iOS inside. They're not selling an iPad. It's basically a tablet with an iOS inside. In the future, when they sell an iCar, that's another car with an iOS inside. If I put an iOS into a table or chair, it can become an iTable or iChair as well. <laughs> This is the power of focus. The reason why Apple has been good at what they're doing for the past 20 years is because they've mastered and perfected one key element in their business, and that's iOS. I'm going to give another example closer to home, and this is where Steve Jobs says when he was asked the question, Steve, what is one thing you're very proud of in Apple that you think made you successful for the past few years? And he says, I am as proud of what we don't do as I am with what we do, deciding what not to do is as important as deciding what to do. In other words, it's not a question of the volume of the things that you do every day. What matters is the quality of the output. When I was with Tony Fernandez uh, two years ago, I started out, one of my favorite stories is this, and this was from Delta Airlines of the United States. In 1993, one of the cabin crew members suggested to management, boss, do you notice this lettuce that we've been serving to the entrees of the passengers? I notice that none of the passengers are eating them, and whenever they get thrown into the garbage, everything gets, you know, smell bad. So may I suggest to take it out because it's not really that important. Management obviously was surprised. Initially, they resisted it, but they took the advice, and in the first three months of taking out the lettuce, either the passengers did not notice that the lettuce was gone, or in fact, they thought that the plate looked cleaner. And so management said, wow, this, this is working. Let's continue it for another year. And in one year, just by taking out the lettuce and all the entrees, they saved 1.4 million US dollars. Imagine the small impact of taking out those lettuce and how it led to such a big savings for a company like Delta Airlines. And just like Delta Airlines, a lot of us in this room are like this. We harbor so many things we think are important. But really, if we know how to let them go, it can lead to something else. And so that's my assignment for all of you guys tonight. Do you have some lettuce in your life that you thought should always be there, but really, you need to know how to let it go? Remember, for every no that you say, it gains you a yes to something else. And that yes must be something that can truly lead you and set you up for success. As the song goes, let it go. <laughs> All right? Lesson number three. It's, um, and it's talking about leadership these days, and I'm sure a lot of you guys...